Hi everyone. Um, today we'll kickstart our study session for the book Common Data Science at Command Line. And we'll basically introduce um, what the chapters looks like and also go through some section about the chapter of the book. So um, the first chapter of the book basically discusses um, or introduce why command line is important or makes you as a data center more efficient and productive. And um, it discusses a lot of um, steps that uh, use in data science that can leverage the command line usage. And uh, we'll go through the chapters briefly and see what the entails. And um, yeah, so let's start going. So who this book is for? This book is for everyone, that is data scientists, data analysts, engineers, everyone. Because we know in data science, it involves a lot of process and you get the data, clean the data, you know, find some kind of a statistical analysis to explore, visualize the data, you know, and you can construct a model and uh, put the result into production, right? So all these steps that we can see here, command line can be effectively used to achieve some of these tasks. Not only these tasks, but can also command line can be used to do other stuff that are not within the data science five line, as we will see shortly. Um, as this um, Tim O'Reilly said, anyone who does not have the command line at their back and core is really missing something. Um, so yeah, of course, um, now, today, if you want to do some kind of um, maybe uh, uh, you want to run some remote or uh, some analysis on remote machine or some kind of service, you must have command line as your tool, right? So this is one of the um, uh, importance of command line. It's useful as a data science and uh, it has a lot of opportunities, I mean, advantage. So let's see um, some of the chapters of the book. So the book has some um, 10 chapters and basically the first chapter is just a tour about how the book is organized and chapter two explore some of the requisite that can be used um, for uh, command line. For example, chapter two, shows how we can actually download the data set for this book and also how we can um, set up the environment to uh, run all the commands available in this book. And also it discussed briefly on some of the essential commands used for command line. Uh, chapter three basically discusses some, uh, some of the tools that can be used to obtain data maybe from the web you maybe you can actually you have your data in excel so you want to transform it into uh, excel i mean csv you know a lot of how you can work with the different kind of data I and mean, how you can extract data from html how you can extract data from twina from so it discusses a lot of tools that can be used with that um Chapter four basically discusses on how you can be able actually to uh, perform complex tasks with just one line, uh, command line. So uh, we know that uh, in command line, we can use um, a single task to perform many tasks. For example, you want to copy, edit, or rename 1,000 files. So you can use command uh, for renaming to remain, but you can turn this um, uh, sequence of tags into powerful complex by just one line to automate this kind of stuff. So this is what uh, chapter four discusses. Chapter five, scrubbing the data. So we know when we get our data, it may not actually be um, 
clean, we need to pre-process uh, pre and do some other kind of cleaning of the data, filtering, and a lot of other stuff, right? So this chapter scrubbing the data discusses that. And um, then chapter six, which is project management with MEC. So we know that um, uh, because command line is actually uh, a kind of interactive, it is challenging to keep track of your, the workflow one can do. What I mean by workflow is uh, how can you perform complex tasks in a very um, good workflow? So chapter six provide uh, or presented a command line to call MEC, which allow you to define data science workflow um, in terms of dependencies and other stuff. Uh, and this kind of project workflow increase the producibility, um, uh, not only for you, but also for some colleagues and peers that you work with. Um, exploring data, um, so this, um, uh, this actually uh, is one of the data science pipelines. So you can use these uh, many tools here to see statistics of the data, create insightful visualization and look at the data, view it. Um, so a lot of tools, uh, command line tools are discussed in chapter. Um, then chapter nine, basically what it discusses is um, how can you actually run multiple tasks in parallel? So we know that um, Nowadays, computers are having multiple cores, and we need basically to speed up, speed up the process of maybe our data analysis or some stuff, especially for data intensive tasks, right? So that you can apply command line tools to very large data set and run them on multiple cores, even uh, maybe on remote machine, remote machine. So you can SSH one of your remote machine and you can run large data intensive tasks and uh, you can, accomplish such kind of tasks within small fraction of time that you can use on small machine. Then chapter 9 basically discuss what is called modeling. Um, so uh, we all know that, um, um, I mean, you can do modeling, do programming for your modeling stuff on any programming language, but you can actually run those model from command line. So you can design your program, everything, um, maybe uh, this, turn it in scripts and now use command line to run all those scripts. Maybe you can use this to um, uh, uh, employ an API to perform such kind of competition as well in the cloud. So you can run some model, you can model your data using some command line uh, tools via an API. Um, then finally, chapter 10 um, discusses how to employ the flow of command line in other environment and programming languages such as um, Python and uh, uh, yeah, so finally chapter 12, it discusses um, some recommendation on how one can uh, use uh, these uh, tools. So that's basically a very uh, tower of the chapters of the book. Now, before that, uh, let's go to the next session in the book, which, uh, Ask, what is command line now? That's the question, what is command line? So some ways there is some kind of confusion what uh, someone will say terminal, someone will say command line and so like that. So this command line and terminal are often used in touch and develop to indicate a, a test-based program for navigating into your operating system. So sometimes we you know in your, um, in your uh, Windows, I mean, Mac, if you're in your Mac, there is a program called Terminal. So that Terminal is used to run um, some programs to communicate with their computer operating system. For example, if I want to copy some file, uh, I don't want to use the G uh, GUI, graphical user interface to click and copy. I can open Terminal, which is the application and run some program inside it, uh, give some command, right? Um, so sometimes you can see um, command line is somehow more or less um, in use in uh, Windows and stuff like that, but terminal is uh, more or less in Mac and Unix stuff. So you can see this is an example of a terminal, and this is also a terminal in Linux here. Um, yeah, so that's what terminal is. But now terminals, this terminal enables you to interact with a shell. So this terminal, this terminal enable one to interact with what is called a shell. So now the question is, what is even a shell? So a shell is basically 
a program that allows you to interact with your operating system. So here we can see this is a terminal, which is the um, a test-based program that can accept commands. So the program that accepts these commands and send communicate them with the operating system is called a shell. So a shell is a program that takes command from the keyboard and give them to the operating system to perform the tax. So more or less like you have your uh, program in language Python, you write some program, it takes this program and send it to the operating system or to, um, interpreter whatsoever and do that. So a shell is a program that you type some commands and now uh, you said more copy. The shell is a program that takes those commands and now communicate with the operating system. But however, there are different kind of flavors of shell. Um, so what I mean is um, there are different kind of shells one can use. Uh, the f uh, more or less like we have different kind of um, programming language. You can have Python, R, Java, everything. Now we have different kind of shell. That is, we have different language that communicate with the operating systems. So uh, for example, we have Bonnie shell. Um, we have uh, born again shell, which is called Bash. And this is one of the, um, the default uh, shell in Unix based operating system and Mac OS is um, the default one. We have C shell and we also have what is called Z shell, which is called ZSH, right? This is called ZSH or Z shell. This is called um, Bash. Um, so previously Mac is basically using Bash, but now Mac also changed to using the shell command the language that communicate uh, to ZSS shell. Now, what makes these shells different? We'll see a bit, but um, if you wanna know what kind of shell you're using, so here we have different kind of shell, uh, Bonley shell, Genovia, C shell, corn shell, Z shell. Um, if you are using um, Bash, this is what you will basically see um, the uh, prompt. So this is called a prompt, right? So for example, here is a prompt. This thing is called a prompt that allows you to type something. It's called a prompt. So this is how you see the prompt. So in um, SH and Bash, you can see this is the dollar sign like this. This is the dollar sign like this. Um, the uh, this is the what you see. All right. Um, but what seen here, you can see we have Z shell or Z SH. You see like um, for prompt for non root user. Um, is this so for root user is hostname and hash, but for non root user is hostname and this um, percentage sign. You can see this is the hostname, right? And this is the so this is ZSS shell. When you see this is ZSS shell, but even the bash, you can customize that to look the same. But for default settings, this is where you will see this is the default, and this is the uh, complete path name. Um, when you want to find the path of Z shell, is bin ZSH, bin KSH, bin CSH bin bash um, for bash and bin sh or s bin sh for bone initial. So these are some of the stuff we should know. Uh, but also this ZSH um, or um, bash, you can customize it. And um, we have what is called um, uh, uh, oh my ZSH, which basically allows you to customize your, um, uh, your uh, terminal to look small. Uh, better and looks more intuitive and nice looking. Um, but how can you know what shell you are using? And um, basically you can use these commands to show which shells you are using. Uh, for example, I can use this echo shell. Um, let me show that echo shell and uh, I can use my terminal. Here I can type this. You can see here I'm using uh, bean ZSH, right? Or I can use this guy uh, here and um, I also try to show my Right, so when I use this, you can see I'm using bin ZSH, right? So this is how you can know which command you are using. Um, yeah, so, um, but what is the difference between these um, different kind of uh, shells? So the different is in all this has to do with specific commands, right? So for example, on some system, 
you list directly using DRS and other use LS. So what this means is that uh, some commands may differ across the shells because it's basically um, a language, right? So for example, you are using uh, Python and using R. If you want to um, rename a file in R is different from the way you rename a file in Python. So this is more or less, this, uh, more or less the same. Uh, some commands differ from using ZSH and um, shell so that's um what this um, command line is and yeah so that's um about uh, the introduction of this chapter uh so in the next uh, chapter what we basically see is um uh, uh science command line no <laughs> science that command So um, next week, what we'll see is we'll get started in chapter two, and we'll be able to see um, uh, how this command line actually works um, and some of the introduction on how we can uh, install or Docker, how we can get our data set and, you know, to just um, get prepared for the subsequent chapters. So chapter two, um, next week, um, we'll um, come over and see what will happen. All right, thank you very much and for joining today. And without uh, any question, I think uh, we see you next week. Bye-bye. Um,